Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about how these side romance crush characters help make the pretty little liars into like better people. So, one of the things I love about Pretty Little Liars is one, the original series, and two, the first season. The first season is just so good, so captivating. And it was a time where they didn't have to rely on desperation to keep the viewers hooked in, you know? And I still remember when this show first came out, man, it was like just a really like interesting, cool premise, something that I've never really seen before. The way it was written, the way A was and everything and how this person was so mysterious and texting their phones and stuff like that. It was really something to behold, you know what I'm saying? And this series is a whole lot better than all the spinoffs and even the reboot. Don't even get me started on the reboot. But one of the things that I've noticed when it comes to that, the Pretty Little Liars, no matter how much you love these characters, you gotta remember, they aren't perfect. They make their mistakes. They have flaws. Um, they make some bad decisions. And sometimes they start off as really terrible people. And so, like... One of the things I noticed in season one is that like there were certain male characters that were either crushes or love interests or something like that. And they helped make some of the worst um, members of the group sympathetic and not only relatable, but made you rethink how that person is and to where they start to become like your favorite. Now, Emily technically shouldn't even be on this list because she's always been sweet and compassionate and stuff like that. But it was just something that happened in season one I can't overlook and I love so much. Now, I'm going to leave Arya off this list only because, well, I can't think of no side character that made Arya a better person from all the dumb bad stuff that she was doing because you know she was dating her teacher a grown man and she was only like 15 years old and i'm starting to think about all the side characters that was crushes or potential crushes and all of them just kept furthering her relationship with her teacher there was that one boy who did like mixed martial arts and he helped her date Ezra Moore, there was Ezra's brother. I can't even remember that storyline. I remember at one point there was some black dude in the later seasons, and I think he might have been a cop. But then, of course, you know, when it comes to the black characters on the show, they always disappear, end up dying, or get written off, or something like that. So I don't even remember much of what happened with that. And every other love interest she had was like toxic, like no. Um, that time they tried to like do some type of flirt thing between her and Jason and it's like he's an adult <laughs> so they never really had a good side character for Arya sadly and so Arya always just stayed like the same making the same mistakes and like this and that and while her character like, it's almost like her character was stuck and couldn't progress but when she did progress it was always a digression or whatever and it just kept like getting worse and worse because of the whole Ezra thing but when it comes to these three guys and these three girls these three guys really brought out the best in these characters that just made you go and think okay there's more to you um beyond the surface like you are sweet you are compassionate you don't judge a book by its cover like it really brought out the humanity in them that helped further their character growth and when it came to that of other characters now i know what you're gonna say why is spencer paired with alex and not toby and why is Hannah not paired with Caleb instead of Lucas? And why does, you know, 
Emily get Toby instead of like Spencer? Well, there's a very logical reason for that. And I've literally said it because I've said literally these were the characters that first brought out their humanity and everything and made them compassionate characters that will later cause them to become better characters uh, for those other characters to like, you know, interact with them and stuff. Like, it's all the ones that were, like, you know, the blueprint, if you will, and stuff. And so, like, I guess I will start with, like, probably Spencer first. Spencer, the who I always thought as the mean one. Like, I like Spencer. Spencer's a good character. She's smart. She's driven. She's determined. But Spencer is very rude and mean towards people. She's always blaming people for stuff. She's always assuming people are A and she's always pointing the finger. And that can make you into a bad character when you're constantly pointing the finger at people and assuming the worst about them. And she is a person who done that throughout the entire series. And, you know, it has to do with her family. Her, her family is very toxic. There's Melissa, who's dating a dude who's a literal pedo and everything. There's her father, who cheats on his wife and has a very nasty temper. The mom is all right, but, like, the mom is very stern and wants her daughter to be a certain way, you know? And in the family, you know, Spencer just feels like she's not good enough, especially when everybody compares her to her older sister, who they look at as being perfect. But I don't know why people think Melissa is perfect when Melissa is so gullible dating all these terrible guys that Spencer keeps trying to steal. Yes, Spencer keeps trying to steal all her sister's boyfriends and fiancés who happen to be older than her. And so, and then of course, when we found out in later seasons, Spencer's has a drug problem and everything. And so, like, you know, when it comes to a lot of characters, hers is probably the one that probably has the most growth and um, character development. Some fans believe it's because I, Marlene King, um, likes Torin a whole lot better than the other like cast members and writing her in more. They have a better bond. And cause you ever notice that Spencer gets a lot to do in the later seasons, especially towards the end. And she even got to direct an episode and stuff, the actress who plays her. And so, you know, because Spencer comes from this rich middle class family where I think one of her family members is like a lawyer or something like that. And like, you know, her sister's literally dating a doctor and they literally are members of a country club. And her father is like some kind of businessman. And so, you know, they are, they are very prestigious, stuck up, like aristocrat type family. And this has spilled over into the personality of that of Spencer. Now, of course, we find out in later seasons that Spencer mom is not her real mom. It's like, I think Alex Drake or something like that. Um, what's her name? Um, Allison's aunt or whatever her name was. So, you know, but it's still her real father. He just cheated and stuff. But nevertheless, she grew up with like, you know, the Hastings family and she has this certain way about her. She can really rub people the wrong way and be a bit prickly and stuff. But before she started her romance with Toby, which I did not see coming. And yes, her relationship with Toby did make her a better person um, for a slight while, even though she was still being that nasty kind of person she was. It was interesting. She was still the person she was, but she was still dating him. But yes, it did help make people like Spencer um, a whole lot more. But, you know, you got to remember how they kind of got together. It's like after a while, because she used to think he was like a killer and, and he was a bad person and all this other stuff. She did not want to give him a chance and accept him as a human being. But, you know, as time started passing and Emily helped convince her and stuff and certain clues started to reveal that he had nothing to do with all the bad stuff that happened and this and that. 
and like how Allison blinded like you know the Jenna thing and all this other crap you gotta remember how their romance kind of started they was in a hotel room like you know um spying on someone because they were trying to figure out i think who a was or something like that and they had to sleep in the same bed and he took his shirt off and she saw his muscles and she got turned on by that and then next thing you know they hooked up and became like a couple and stuff and so their whole relationship started because she got seduced <laughs> and everything she got turned on and so but you know there's another relationship with her that, I, that people tend to forget that happened in season one and i feel like this was the relationship in my eyes that made me started to like the character and think you know what there's a different like page to this book of hers that I haven't read yet. And she's actually not really who you think she is. And that's her relationship with Alex and everything. I really liked this relationship and it pissed me off that it ended so early. And when it ended, he got written off. And of course, later on, they hooked up with Toby because, you know, they always do the ship between main characters, this and that. And then later in the last season, I think she was with Caleb, which was just really stupid. <laughs> but like, you know, her and Alex will always like hold a place in my heart. Like, you know, because it helped me look at her in a different view. So you have Spencer who stuck up and aristocratic and like rude and all this and that. And then you have Alex a hard working like person who works at the country club as like in the kitchen and stuff like that and the thing about that is that you would never expect for her to like him you know what i'm saying because she is middle class she is prestigious she is aristocratic she is highly smart and everything and people like that typically look down on people like him and not to mention he is a man of color he is hispanic and everything and she comes from a white family even though the actress is half black can you believe that i had no idea and so like normally people like that that are rich and snooty will look down on somebody like him and plus he's a servant working in the kitchen and stuff and what got those two like interacting with each other is because her father asked her to go easy on like these people he's playing tennis on and he wanted to make a good impression and seal some kind of deal so she didn't want to do that because she's a very competitive person and next thing you know like um so she had to like lower her like you know tennis playing skills and Alex noticed that and asked her, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you going easy on them? And she tells him, you know, my daddy asked me to. And he tells her, you know, you shouldn't do that and everything. So, of course, what she does, she starts playing good again and ends up beating the other people, which pisses off her father. And when he finds out the reason why, he doesn't like it. He doesn't really like Alex and everything because her father is a very stuck up man. I think Alex even gets in trouble because once you know um spencer uh, no, whatever spencer's father name is he realized it was alex that made her play really good and i think somehow i can't remember exactly but he might have got alex in trouble at work or something like that right but anyway she starts asking him out on a date now the thing about alex is like i said before he's a hard-working person he wants to earn his own money the um old-fashioned way and not take handouts or nothing like that and just the simple fact that a rich person and a rich like white person at that would date like you know a poor hispanic boy that is saying something like that is something that you don't expect you know what i'm saying especially in today's society that she's able to overlook like you know the fact that he doesn't have a lot of money and that he literally works for her and everything and all those other snooty people that showed a level of like humanity in her that i was not expecting at all 
And it really showed that she doesn't judge a book by its cover. Because when it comes to her friend group, they got money and everything. They might not be as rich as her. Their parents might not have a good job as them, but they are stable and they're really good stable. They're kind of like anywhere between middle to slightly border, like low, but not really, but they're somewhere in the middle of middle class and somewhere, you know, they got those nice home um, and all kind of other stuff, you know, especially those nice clothes. And... I wish you could see more like this from characters that are rich and snooty that would go for somebody who's lesser than them. And then there was something happening where I think he heard about some kind of tennis thing and like a college or something like that and some scouters or whatever. It was some kind of brochure he got in the mail. And it's like, you know, if he signed up for this, you know, he'll have to have a lot of money and this and that to go. And like you know she's all like you should do it but he's all like you know if i get there i want to get there my own like way i can't remember what it was but i think she might have tried to offer him money at one point it's been a while since i watched season one like a long time right but i think she might have tried to offer him money and he just refused because he wants to do like you know get there his own way now there was a kink in their relationship because when another thing that surprised me is like you know she decided to help him out like you know with his job one time like here's this rich girl this fancy house i'm gonna go to this fancy college and she's literally in the kitchen making i think well i don't know if it was like hot dogs or something like that and it's like dude who is this angel all of a sudden? Like, like, he really brought out the best in her. And, you know, that was just, just one of those one type of scenes. It reminds me of American Pie when Oz was working at the hot dog place and then his um, love interest came in and, you know, and stuff like that. And they started talking that bond. It reminded me of that. And, but then she gets pissed at him because that's what the kink in their relationship becomes because there's a board that all the workers write nasty stuff about like all the people who go there and her family is one of them and her and her sister are one. So she gets pissed thinking about, oh, this is what you think of me and, and, and blah, 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 and all this other crap and, and your little friends at work. And so she just leaves, but then she stops. At some point in time, it comes back because she realizes if you reverse it, it's her and her family doing the same thing to people like him. You know what I'm saying? Like she remembers that, hey, my family is stuck up. My, fam my family is elitist and everything. And it rubs workers the wrong way. And the fact she was able to realize that and come back and like forgive him, just it, it just like really like was something. You know what I'm saying? But of course, here comes A messing up a good thing. So A filled out like his application and sent it in and he thought Spencer did it. So because Spencer is of course afraid of A and don't want to anger A, things between them get so bad that he just walks off from her and then they are no more. And when that happened, that really bummed me out because it makes you wonder where their relationship would have went if like you know he would have stayed now of course when she got with toby a whole nother side came from her she really turned into like a good compassionate person romantic wise and stuff and remember her dad hates toby to death and her family doesn't like him. So she was willing to disobey her family, just be with the guy that she fell in love with. And if it wasn't for Alex, you know, there wouldn't be no Spencer and Toby. She wouldn't have been that compassionate person that she was to like look past, like, you know, all the bad stuff that was said about Toby and stuff, you know? Next is Emily and Toby. I know what you're saying. Why can't Emily be paired with Maya? Well, Maya was her actual love interest and stuff. But that happened before the whole her and Toby thing. And the thing about Emily is like Emily's always been as sweet as sugar. She's always been nice. She's always been compassionate. That little smile that like um 
Shay Mitchell would do, which by the way, her real name's not even Shay Mitchell. <laughs> like it's not. I forget what her real name is, but it's not Shay Mitchell. Anyway, I think it might be Shannon, I think. Um, but anyway, so like that little sweet, innocent smile she used to do. Oh, how could you not fall in love with her? You know what I'm saying? Like it was just like the, the most innocent little thing she had like in her and stuff. And she's always been a good character. And, you know, she dated Maya and, you know, her mom didn't approve of that because they were both girls and she had to hide all that and stuff like that. But the thing about her and Toby that really struck me was he had a crush on her. Heck, who didn't? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, Toby was labeled as a bad guy. He had just got juvie. He is the stepbrother of Jenna. And there's always been so many rumors about him that turned out to be false. But the entire town believed that. And when he got out of juvie, people treated him like dirt like crap like he had a huge target on his back he was getting bullied at school and you saw it and everybody saw it. even her friends talked down to him when they would talk to her and talk about oh you know he's like this terrible person this and that and because you know the one of the rumors was is that he was sleeping with his stepsister turns out his stepsister forced him to do it and so that against his will so you know what that is and stuff and the thing is is like you know emily would see him get bullied and everything and that really hurt her you know what i'm saying because like now that she's an out lesbian and stuff she now knows what it's like to have people look down on her and all this other stuff and treat her differently and it's one of the things that she did that shocked like everybody in Rosewood is that she befriended Toby and everything. And cause I remember one of the things that literally broke my heart is I think he had like a bike or something like that, right? And you see him on like some steps and his bike is all mangled and he's just crying and everything. And it's because somebody wrecked his stuff and beat, I guess beat him up or something like that. It was just heartbreaking to see that. You don't get that no more when the series continue. It lost a little part of that heart, you know what I'm saying? That emotional tug strength. And she felt bad for the dude. And so she befriended him. And of course, what happens when you're a dude who's kind of dopey and you have this hot girl befriending you, he started crushing on her. I think he made her like a mixtape or something like that. And, you know, and so he crushed on her but she befriended him and she was willing to do something nobody else in town was willing to do and when people got on to her for being friends with him she did not listen to these people she stuck to her conventions co convictions and she continued to be friends with this dude now there was a point in time where she did start to believe the rumors and thought he might try to hurt her because you know this show always tries to set up a red herring and so she got scared one night and i think he took her to like a dance or something like that she knows she's a lesbian and all this other stuff and she was just gonna be nice and go with him as like a friend and all this and that and her friends were worried for her and she started believing the rumors. The whole A thing started coming up. And so she thought maybe he might try to hurt her. And then like, you know, she screamed and all this and that. And I think he got sent away and she felt bad for that. But then something happened when he came back. Cause then she realized she was being an idiot. And in a ways he realized that she is a lesbian and cause he could tell by the way she looked at Maya. And so he backed off. And then what happened after that was so cool. They remain friends and everything. And it's like, she's part of the reason why Spencer started to, you know, think of Toby in a different way. Because she helped like, you know, convince people he's not a monster. He's not this terrible person and all this other crap. Now, one of the things that does bug me about their friendship is that when you look at the rest of the first season and the rest of like the other seasons and the rest of the show, 
their friendship looks non-apparent like you never really see these two interact no more and that's because then they decided to put him with spencer and her with every other girl like on the show and every once in a while you'll see these two interact and it's kind of like oh yeah i kind of forgot y'all were friends and everything like in season two he came by to see like emily after all that stuff happened in the season one and everybody's all like, you need to leave. Don't you come to this house no more. And, you know, he's all like, I just wanted to see how Emily was doing. And of course, he just also wanted to see Spencer. <laughs> and then I remember in a couple of later seasons, all of a sudden, those two had a scene together again. And they're just interacting with each other. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I forgot y'all are friends. And then also in that season one, not season one, season two, episode one. Like, those two were just talking in her room, and they were just, like, being buddy-buddy. And she even gave him, like, a kiss on the cheek because of how sweet he's been and always stood by her and stuff. And when he found out she was moving and her family was going to paint over, like, you know, the, the measurements of, like, how she aged and got taller, he took it off for her so she can have it in her thing. Like, that is just a sweet, friendshipy type thing to do, you know what I'm saying? But the problem I have with their friendship is, like I said before, it's non-existent as the show progresses and everything. And I really hate how you didn't have those two always interacting or always like talking to each other face to face or calling or anything like that. You know, it was one of those things that where they just really dropped the ball. And I hate that. And last is Lucas and Hannah. Yeah, 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 I know. Lucas isn't necessarily the best character because he was blackmailed by A to do a lot of bad stuff. And also, he's just Hannah's love sick puppy and everything. And is always like fawning over her and this and that. And I know Caleb would probably be a better comparison with that of Hannah. But remember, if there was no Lucas and Hannah, there would be no Caleb and Hannah. Now, granted, it was Caleb and Hannah that actually caused me to like Hannah a whole lot more than that of Lucas and Hannah. Because when I saw the interaction between that of Hannah and that of Caleb, it was just something that was kind of like, oh, wow, she's not really who I thought she was. Now, Hannah started off as the bad girl, hanging out with Mona. Mona's the queen bee. And, like, Hannah was just always falling around, doing whatever Mona wanted. And they was just really rude in that little click thing they had. Like, when we first saw Hannah, she stole sunglasses from, like, the mall and everything. Her family, her father is one of those typical bad fathers, you know, he cheated on the mom, left the mom, started a new family. The mom's a pretty good person and everything, but the mom's a little scandalous with some things that she's done. And so Hannah's always, always seen more like the bad girl who was like the bad hot girl who like, you know, dated the bad boy and everything. She dated a guy named Sean and Sean was just like a terrible person. And so, you know, there wasn't really much I thought about Hannah other than the fact that when she saw her mom, when she was on the couch and her mom comes in with that detective and her mom's just making out with the detective dude. So Hannah doesn't go to jail for stealing sunglasses and stuff. It was just kind of odd. Like you could tell that it was some innocence in Hannah when she was like witnessing all that. But, you know, her and the whole Lucas thing is really interesting. It first started to show signs that she's not really a terrible person, you know? And she's not all like stuck up and everything. See, Allison used to be really, really, really rude and really mean to that of Lucas. She will call him a name I will not repeat, but basically it has to do with a person who was born with both genders and stuff. And have both like you know um sexual organs now i don't know if it's ever been confirmed if he was or not like that's just never like, i don't know i think it might have been hinted but they didn't really do it so i'm not really 100 percent sure but he might have been but either way you know hannah's the type of person who used to hang out with really rude nasty queen bee type people first allison who used to make fun of that of lucas and then you know Mona did the same thing. 
Now, when it comes to Lucas, he's basically a lovesick puppy. Like, he's just in love with Hannah. He's the dopey nerd who loves comic books and stuff. And she's this girl in the clique that's really, like, hot and everything. And so he knows in a million years he could never have her, you know what I'm saying? Plus, he hates, like, a lot of her friends, like Mona and Allison. And so, like, you know, when her and Sean started to have problems and they had to do that little reenactment of, oh, you know, sex ed where you try to get somebody to go in your bedroom, he refused at first, didn't want to do it because he was nervous about the whole Sean thing, but then later just said yes, pissing Sean off. Then, of course, there's the dance when he kept taking Sean's picture with Hannah and trying to have those two get closer together just to piss Sean off more. And so he was like really like, you know, <laughs> I couldn't believe the dude, like he was that smart to kind of like further break up their relationship and stuff by causing Sean to get pissed. Like, <laughs> you gotta give it up to the dude and stuff. But like, you know, when they would get paired for like class projects and this and that, or like better yet, when Hannah had to sell her stuff because her mom was having money problems, he helped her out. And it's weird. They started bonding over like funny internet like videos and stuff. And it was kind of interesting to see that for a while. It was like, here's the like hot, like clickish type girl, the bad girl and everything. And she's giggling and laughing with the school ultra nerd and everything over internet videos of all things. And it's one of those things you like to see. It's kind of like a bit bang theory with Leonard and Penny, you know what I'm saying? And I like things like that, like the whole Leonard and Penny thing, because it's kind of like, you know, the hot girl ain't supposed to be into the nerd. And, you know, he would tell her things like, you know, he's always liked her, he, but he was intimidated by her because of like the whole Sean thing and the whole Allison thing. And then those two really start to bond over how Allison used to make fun of them. She used to call him a name, like I said, I won't repeat, that has to do with both like sex organs. And then she would call, she would make fun of Hannah because Hannah used to be overweight back in the day. And he asked her straight up, why in the world would you be friends with somebody like that? And of course, you know, Allison was the cool girl and she wanted to be cool too. And if she couldn't be in the cool group, then more people would turn on her and stuff like that. And so they had kind of that similarity together where she became like a swan in the eyes of many and he just still remained his same little dopey way. And so like, of course, you know, A had to interfere in all that and A knew that Lucas liked her. And so A had Hannah literally, you know, dance with like Lucas all night at the prom or dance or whatever they had and like really make it seem like Hannah's into him. And that really was jacked up because Lucas thinking, oh man, she really likes me and everything. And Hannah felt terrible about that, you know, because she didn't want to lead this dude on because she knew how much like he cared for her. And that's the thing right there that really sold me on like Hannah, that she did have some compassion that if she didn't want to hurt this guy's feeling because she know it was going to be a nightmare afterwards and stuff. Then, of course, you know, they got her with Caleb. And Caleb's more like the dreamy, mysterious, bad boy type thing. A little sketchy, like, what's he about type thing. You know, and that further people liking Hannah and stuff, you know. And, but when it came back to Lucas, it's just kind of like, ah, then you feel bad for him because you know he really hates Allison. Um, he hates seeing Hannah in the arms of another person. He wishes it could be him. And then it's like, you know, he befriends Caleb and everything, gambles his money away. And then there's that weird boat interaction thing when Caleb had like that surprise birthday party. And, you know, that whole boat thing was weird. <laughs> but anyway, um, but then Lucas did something unexpected. As much as he wants Hannah, because Caleb was out of the picture. You know what I'm saying? And he could have made his move if he wanted to, but he didn't. And when he found out Mona just threw away the letter that Caleb gave her and to give to Hannah, he confronted Mona about that, you know? 
And she tried to bribe him, but all like, you know, man, you could be in the in crowd. I can get you Hannah and everything, but he refused. And he actually went and got Caleb and brought him back in there, thing so that Caleb could be with Hannah. And that was a really kind thing to do. And you know, he had to suck up a lot of pride because of that. And you know, I forgot to mention that, like when Mona started making fun of Lucas and everything, Hannah actually defended Lucas and stood up for Lucas and stood up against her friend. That was shocking because that is her best friend. And if you turn on a queen bee, they could make the whole school hate you. But Hannah didn't care. She wasn't going to make that same mistake that she did with Allison. When, Because a long time ago, she tried to stand up to Allison, but Allison shut her down fast and she's been a coward ever since. And the fact that she was willing to stick up for Lucas and everything really showed there's another side to her. There's another side of that coin being flipped and everything, you know? I do kind of wish they could have dated just like a little bit, but you know, it just like never happened and stuff. And you know, it's weird how like little side characters or like main recurring characters and stuff can really help shape like other characters that start off not as great or start off as good become better and stuff and that is due to good writing back in the day when this show used to have really good writing and used to really flesh out their characters you know pity the reboot can never do that there's just something about that reboot that just like i don't know they take a bunch of ideas toss them in the air pick whichever ones they want and just flush out a story as fast as possible and it just doesn't work that way like i will never like the reboot never never it's just it's just one of those things that where it cannot emulate the specialness that the original series had. They actually took time and care with the original series until, of course, you know, they messed it up and everything. But, like, it's just one of those things. Like, it just, there's something about this show. And there's other great shows out there, but it's just something about this show, these characters, and how they was written, especially in the beginning, that made them feel not it made them feel fictional but real at the same time alrighty well i'll talk to y'all later bye